let the worshipers in the house bless him tonight come on let's worship him let's worship him let's worship him father we give you praise tonight thank you bless that holy spirit thank you bless that comforter tonight what can we do without you feed us tonight lift us up tonight strengthen us tonight let your name alone be glorified holy spirit have your way in this place tonight have your way in this place tonight we vow to give you all the glory and the praise tonight in jesus wonderful name we worship come on give god a shout of praise amen the lord bless you can have your seats tonight or well, appreciate the music team amen what well, a thank god for is awesome presence here tonight. Amen. We'd like to appreciate everyone who is joining online and those who are physically present here tonight. If you have been coming around uh, to the Tuesday services, especially this year, um, we've been speaking on the subject of service. I think... Uh, uh, the last time I spoke, I started a series of uh, messages on the requirements of service. Today, uh, still along the line of service, I'm going to be speaking tonight or from tonight on the subject of the significance of service. The significance of of service and our text scripture can be found in first corinthians 15 first corinthians 15 verse the last verse actually verse 58 first corinthians 15 verse 58 says therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast, some say steadfast, unmovable, always uh, abounding in the work of the Lord, uh, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steadfast, unmovable, always what? Abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. That's very interesting. One translation of this scripture that I love uh, is found uh, in a translation that is known as the New Century Version. New Century Version says, uh, So my dear brothers and sisters, stand strong. Do not let anything move you. Always give yourselves uh, fully to the work of the Lord uh, because you know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. You know that your work in what? The Lord is what? Never wasted. One translation again of this scripture that is known as the message translation says, uh, with all this going for us, uh, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground and don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master. Confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. I like that. Confident that nothing you do for the Lord is what? A waste of time or effort. Let us pray. Father, your word is already anointed. Speak expressly to us tonight uh, in the language that we understand. Uh, 
Bring us into a deeper encounter in our walk with you. Let every burden be lifted tonight and let every yoke be destroyed. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Glorify Jesus. Let the blessing of today be permanent. We give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I said in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The significance of service. When we are talking about service here, we are talking about the things that you do for the Lord. Your service to the Lord. Your walking for God or serving in one capacity or the other in the house of God. When we are talking about service here, we are talking about functioning on the behalf of God. And listen, we function on the behalf of of God in several ways. Many of us are involved uh, in different manners uh, of service. Uh, some of us are serving at various levels. Uh, and listen, when we are talking about service uh, or serving, I'm not just limiting it alone uh, to people who serve at the altar. You can be serving God with your finance. Uh, you can be serving God with your time. Uh, there are several ways uh, that we serve God. Uh, our focus tonight and uh, is on the significance of whatever kind of service you are rendering to God. And I think the first question to ask yourself or ourselves tonight is, uh, does my service uh, to God, does he have any, any form of significance? Uh, because, you know, I've met people who have asked me this question. Does it really matter if I serve God? What is the big deal in serving God? Uh, I mean, are there things that my serving God or my service to God will accomplish? The word significance means the quality of something being important. The quality of something being important or meaningful. So in other words, we are trying to look at the importance. Does my service to God, does he have any implication what are the implications? What's the weightiness of my service to God? Listen, you need to know whether your service to God means anything or not. Because I think when people understand what they are doing in terms of you're working for God or serving God in any capacity, it will help them to derive the maximum benefit. You know, one of the reasons people serve God anyhow is because they don't understand the significance of their service. If you understand the value, if you understand the words, uh, if you understand the importance uh, of what serving God means. Uh, listen, not just means uh, to you, but what it means to God. Uh, I think many people will take their service very seriously. We're going to be going on this journey tonight. And I trust God uh, that he will shed his light uh, or shed uh, his wisdom uh, on this very important area of our lives uh, in Jesus' name. Now, if you go back to our text, uh, you will see that uh, certainly your service to God uh, has a lot of significance. And I will tell you why. You see, that's why Paul was stressing it. Uh, he says, my beloved brethren. He says, be steadfast. What does that mean? To be steadfast means to be firm and steady. It means to stand strong. He didn't just say be steadfast in God's work. He says, unmovable. What does that mean? Don't let anything or anybody move you from the position of serving God. And in our capital, it says always abounding. Listen, if he had said abounding, that would have been okay. But it is said always. What does that mean? That means that I need to immerse myself in God's work. Listen, that is the way you and I can derive the maximum benefits. I can tell you that the reason Apostle Paul was emphasizing, I mean, you abounding, you being unmovable, you being steadfast in God's service is because your service matters. Sometimes say, my service matters. Come on, say it like I say, my service matters. Listen, 
there is a lot of significance uh, attached to your service. Uh, listen, listen to this. I always say this to people when it comes to whatever they are doing for God. I said, if you look at whatever you are doing for God, uh, whether as an usher or a protocol, I mean officer, or as an intercessor, or somebody who is in the children's ministries, for instance, whatever you are doing for God, um, if you look at it from the point of the significance it has, uh, you will take it more seriously. And listen to this, you will know that heaven is counting on you. You will know that, uh, listen, God is counting on you to get the job done. Uh, listen, God is always looking for people. Ezekiel 22 verse 30, it says, I search or I seek for a man to stand in the gap. He's always in the business of seeking. When God appeared to Jeremiah, I mean Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, the question was this, who will go for us? Whom will I send? Before Isaiah volunteered and said, he says, here am I, Lord, send me. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. So it's important for us to know that um, your service, my service, uh, has uh, a lot of significance. Now, before we begin to look at uh, the significance of your service, uh, my service to God, uh, there's a very important question uh, that I want to address. Uh, why should we be actively involved in serving God? Because that was the message Apostle Paul was saying here. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, where he says, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. That means uh, he wants us to be actively involved. Say, actively involved. You know, in the military, or if you serve in any of the uh, armed forces, uh, you discover that uh, you can be in active service. Somebody was telling me about some uh, some some people. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm not sure whether it's a. I think it's the army or the marines uh, in America that at times some people are in active service uh, and some people they are no longer in active service, but they are on standby in case of emergency. Now they, they they may not be actively serving as soldiers, but when there's emergency, they can call on them. No, so in a way you will say that you are still serving now. God wants you and I to be active. Say active. That's a saying that goes does. Uh, wherever you are, I mean, wherever you are, be there with all of your heart. At times, uh, some people are serving, but they are not serving like the others are. So, why does God, why should I be actively involved in serving God? I will give you three reasons because of time. The first reason is because uh, that is the reason you and I were created. Did you know that the reason for your creation was to live for him? Isaiah 43 verse 21 says, uh, These people, talking about you, I mean you and I, have I formed for myself. Hear me. God did not create you for you. He created you for himself. Amen? Amen. Now the question is this. Uh, are you giving him glory or not? Revelations 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. It says, for thou hast created all things. Why? It says, for thy pleasure they are and were created. So listen to this, uh, the reasons that, I mean, one of the reasons God created you was what? To bring in pleasure, to bring in glory. Listen, are you bringing in glory? Do you know that when God made Adam, you will see that when God placed them in the Garden of Eden, listen, what God told them, Genesis 2 verse 15, it says, uh, I am putting you in the garden to do two things, uh, to dress it and to keep it. The word dress means to walk. In other words, uh, God was saying, I am putting you in charge. You are so sad and not kumba. Amen, somebody? Listen, anybody that is not, if you are not serving God, you are not fulfilling the reason why God made you. 
You are not fulfilling the reason for your creation. Listen, every part of your being is supposed to bring him glory. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. First Peter 2 verse 9. It says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See after me say I was formed created to bring him glory. That's why you should be actively serving God. <laughs> because that's the reason he made you. That's the reason he created you. He formed you for himself. Now the question is this. Are you living for him or living for yourself? This is why God wants you and I to be actively involved in serving. Number two. Why should I be actively involved in serving? It is because that is one of the major reasons why you were saved. <laughs> I remember in the early days of my Christian experience, uh, there was a slogan that was very popular. Saved to serve. Remember I've heard that before. Saved to what? To serve. Listen, you were not saved to combat the ground. You were not saved to make up the number. Listen, if, and let me even say something that will shock you. You were not saved per se to go to heaven. I hope you understand that what I just said now. Hello? Come on, talk to me. I say hello, somebody. Because if you don't, if you don't understand what I just said now, you can take it out of context. The, otherwise, listen, the day you got born again, you'll have just gone to heaven straight. Hello? I'm going to know that. Because God could have taken us straight to heaven. So the, the primary reason he saved is not to go to heaven. Hello? Listen, that's the ultimate, but that's not the primary. Because you are here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you are not here to combat the ground. You are not here to make up the number. You see, if every child of God will know what, I'm, what we are talking about tonight, to understand that the reason they were saved is to serve. Nobody will encourage them to serve. I discovered this revelation when I got born again. <laughs> And it changed my perspective with regards to my Christianity. That's why anywhere I was, apart from my home church, when I had the opportunity of being somewhere, maybe on IT or on holidays, I always get myself involved in serving in the, any church. Because you see, the reason you were saved is to serve. Hello? So that's why you should be actively involved. You know, people say, it's not my church. Listen, it doesn't have to be your church. Anywhere you find yourself as a child of God, you are supposed to serve. I remember years ago when I went to do my industrial uh, attachment uh, in Kano. I had to stay with a family friend and I had to attain New Generation Bible Church. The church I was pastored then by Pastor Elmo Bonal Bishop. I mean, once I got to that church, uh, I went to introduce myself to the resident pastor. I said, this is where I, I come from. My pastor said, I should come and tell He said, uh, I'm here on six months. Uh, what, what areas of service do you have in this church? I volunteered. I joined the counseling department. Amen, somebody. I, I didn't say, ah, nobody. It is not my church. Let me just sit down for the next six months. You, you, you see, if you understand the mentality of service that you need to be actively involved, anywhere you find yourself, you will serve. If you understand what I say, I say amen, somebody. Uh, when God saved Israel from Egypt, you will see this phrase in probably five or six places. Exodus 7 verse 16, Exodus 8 verse 1, Exodus 8 verse 20, Exodus 9 verse 1, Exodus 9 verse 13, Exodus 10 verse 3. The message was clear that Moses brought to Pharaoh. Let my people what? Go. Why? That they may serve me. The reason he was saving them from captivity and bondage was to what? Serve him. The reason he saved you and I is to also serve. You see, if every child of God understands this from the onset, nobody will have to encourage you to serve God. 
This is why you need to be actively involved in serving God. Luke chapter 1 verse 74 and 75 it says uh, that we've been delivered from the hand of our enemies may serve him how without fear how in holiness and righteousness all the days some say all the days not some all the days of your life that's how God wants you to live to serve him in fact I want to show you a scripture I don't want to quote it go to Romans Romans chapter 6. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Romans chapter 6. Are you there? Look at verse 18. Romans 6 18. It says being then made free from sin. If you have been made free from sin. Say amen somebody. It now says you become what? Servants of what? Righteousness. You are now a servant of righteousness. I'm no longer supposed to serve sin, but I'm supposed to serve righteousness. How? If you want to understand what that means, uh, if you go down to verse 22, it breaks it down. It says, but now, be made free from sin. You became what? Servants to whom? Some of them say, I'm a servant of God. I can't hear you say, I'm a servant of God. It says, you have your fruits unto what? Holiness and what? And the end what? Everlasting life. It's important for us to realize that the reason you were saved is to serve. Sometimes I say, I was saved to serve. So that's why you should be actively involved in serving God. Number three, why should we be actively involved in serving God because of what serving the Lord will do for you. I'm sure you're wondering, will serving God do anything for me? The answer is yes. In fact, serving God will do something for you. Serving God will do something to you. Serving God will do something through you. And let me also add, serving God will do something in you. I say it again. When you serve God, it will do something for you, in you, to you, and through you. That's why you should be actively involved. Listen, the people who are not serving God, they don't know what they are missing. I was telling somebody this. <laughs> when I first got born again, 1986, August, I discovered that the reason I backslided was because I was not serving God. Do you know it's easy to fall away when you are not actively serving God? They say, an idle what hand is what? The devil's workshop. <laughs> I mean, if all you do is just, uh, you just warm the pews, you warm the bench, uh, you come, you hear the word. Imagine somebody, all he does is eat, eat, eat and exercise. That's how people gather fat. And people wonder, hey, what happened? Look at my tummy. Hey, man, somebody. What happened? I've, I've become rotund. Amen, somebody. I've got that flesh. And you're wondering, ah, I used to be size whatever. I mean, listen, when you, all you're doing, you're just eating, not exercising. God did not create you to live like that. Amen? I said, amen. So it's important for you to know that there are a lot of benefits. There are, listen, many, if many people knew what serving God would do for them, they would get involved. There's a scripture in Exodus 23, Exodus 23, 25, 26. Uh, it says, uh, you will serve the Lord your God. Uh, what will happen? It will bless your bread and water. It now says, I will take sickness away from the midst of you. It says in the, verse 26, the number of your days, I will fulfill. There shall none be barren or cast their young in your land. So barrenness is forbidden. Amen, somebody? To die before your time is forbidden. Amen somebody. Because he says he will fulfill the number of your days. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Deuteronomy 28 verse 47. It says because you serve the Lord your God. Uh, because you serve not the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Why? For the abundance of all things. What does that mean? When you serve the Lord it opens the platform for the abundance of all things. 
So, so my, my at, listen, this is where God wants you to be involved. If you remember our text scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be steadfast. Don't say be steadfast. Unmovable. Don't say unmovable. Always abounding what? In the work of the Lord. Why? Knowing that your labor in the Lord. In the Lord. Very important. Amen, somebody? Do you know that? <laughs> Someone was cracking a joke up. Someone say, if you serve government, whatever, 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 yes, of course, what I'm going to give you is a gratuity. Amen, somebody? And probably monthly uh, pension. Amen, somebody? What God is going to give you is better than that. Hello, somebody in the house. I, I was listening to Creflo Dollar yesterday, and he was talking about the blessing of longevity, the blessing of long life, and he was talking about the fact that he's not thinking of quitting or retiring. Because, <laughs> at least... In my Bible, amen, somebody. Amen. I didn't say anything, anything like retiring from serving God there. Amen, somebody. Amen. The idea of retiring, you know, per se, was gotten from the concept of priests who served between 30 and 50 years in old, under the old covenant. But I want you to know that God wants you to be relevant for him every day of your life. Can I have an amen? amen. Shout out to me, say, I will serve him until I go to my glory. Say, I will serve him until I go to my reward. That's the mentality. That's the mentality. The Bible says the path of the righteous is like the shining what? Light. That shines more and more unto a more perfect day. So it's important for you to know that this is why Paul was saying, be steadfast. Be your moving. Don't let anything move you. Don't let people move you. I've seen people, they have been moved from their place of assignment by people. I've seen people because of pressure, because of challenges, they have left their place of assignment. Listen, it says always abounding. Listen, th 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 there will be pressure. There will be temptation. There will be the, I mean, there will be the torture. The devil will come. You see, the devil is against your service. You know why? Because he knows what serving God will do. That's why he comes to discourage you. Ah, uh ah, -uh, are you the only one? Are you the mother of Jesus? Ah, uh -uh, are you the pastor? What's your own there? Amen. So what? Tap your neighbor and say, it's my own. I mean, listen, if everybody who's a child of God sees themselves as a stakeholder, they will take God's work more seriously. Because listen to this, uh, if it works... If it blows up, it's to your glory and your what? It's to the fact that you did your part. And if it collapsed, it will be to the fact that you didn't play your part. Too. So, tap your neighbor and say, it matters. So, why should I take my service to God seriously? What is the significance of my serving God? What's important? Why, why should I take my service to God seriously? What is the significance? What's the implication of my service? Oh, I'm an intercessor. Oh, I am a part of the meters and greeters. I, I welcome people. Listen, your, your part is important. It has an import. It has a, an implication. It carries weight. Amen. Amen. Some people think that ah, there's some service doesn't carry weight. People wash toilets. Listen. Anything you do for God is of great importance. Great importance. No assignment for God is greater than the other. You need to look at it. Uh, uh, some people say, ah, I'm not part of the music team. No, nobody sees me. They, they don't know us. That, uh, maybe our job is not important. Who says who? The fact that some teams, uh, some ministries uh, are more prominent than the others does not mean that your job does or your assignment does not count. I think I've showed you the story of a pastor who had a dream. And listen, when he woke up again, he was sweating from his dream. Why? Because God showed him like judgment day. People were coming to collect their reward. And he was feeling, you know, snazzy. <laughs> my reward would be, eh, as the pastor, oh my, serious. <laughs> and lo and behold, discovered that 
there was a woman in a church that collected or got more rewarded than him. And he was foolish. Ah, ah, God, why? why? Ah, I'm, I'm the pastor. Ah. He said, yes, you are the pastor. He said, but this woman, what this woman is doing, um, listen to this, this woman, every Saturday, she's in, I mean, Friday, Saturday, she's interceding for souls. It, she does that. Constant, I mean, constant K. Most of the things, she's one interceding and praying for this church day and night. I know you pass, I know you pray, but this woman is the brain behind everything you see in the church. That's why she's getting more rewarded. Amen, somebody. Now, in the natural, you will not probably take what she's doing very important, but as for God, the way God sees is different from the way man sees. Hello, somebody. God says, my ways are not your ways. <laughs> Neither my thoughts your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You know, that's why this man made a mistake. Samuel got to the house of Jesse. He thought that the way God chose the first king, Samuel, when he saw um. Hey, I'm sorry. It's, it's, what's the name of the firstborn? It's not Shammah. Hey, man, somebody. I'm trying to remember the firstborn of Jesse. When he saw him, he said, surely the Lord's anointed. And God said, ah, he's, he's not the one who. God said, I don't see the way man sees. Man looks on the outside, but I look at where? The heart. 4 Samuel 6 verse 7. Eliab, thank you there. So it's important for us to realize uh, that... Uh, your service has significance. Sometimes say, my service has significance. Say, say, my service is extremely important. And I'm going to be giving you reasons why your service is important. Why you should take it seriously. This is why you should not joke with your assignment. This is why you should not joke with serving God. I always say this to people. You are dealing with God, not human beings. <laughs> you are dealing with God. Of course, we serve God through people or under people, but ultimately, you are dealing with God. So, remember that. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. So, why should I take my assignment, my service seriously? Why should I not play with what I'm doing for God? We're going to look at some reasons. I can't cover all the reasons tonight. Whatever we can cover, we'll do tonight. Uh, but the first reason I want to mention uh, why you need to take your service seriously is because uh, service is the basis of greatness. Satan may say service. I can't hear you say service. Is the basis of what? Greatness. Let me ask you a question. How many people want to be great in life? I know everybody will lift up their hands. But listen to this. Do you know that the pathway to service, I mean, to greatness is through service? Let me say something. He that cannot serve, what you are saying is that you are not ready to be great. God says something to me this afternoon. I'm, I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Greatness is not something that you should covet. Greatness is not something that you should demand. Greatness is something that is bestowed on you as you serve. I'll say it again. You know, some people are demanding. They, they, they are coveting to be great. You don't need to covet it. You don't need to demand it. You know, when you hear people say, don't you know who I am? I, I just laugh. I mean, listen. <laughs> you don't need to tell anybody who you are. You don't. And at times, it's a sign of pride. Yeah, don't you know who I am? I, I said, oh, sorry, who are you? John Thomas, amen, somebody. Or Big Ben Phillips, amen. That's your name, amen, somebody. I mean, maybe you forgot your name. You thought you were forgetting your name. No. You see, when you serve, greatness will be bestowed on you. It's not something you should covet. <laughs> I remember a very funny experience years ago. Um, when I was in the university, I accompanied a friend of mine, Reverend Simon. He, he, he's, you know, he's from the Apostolic Church background. 
And there's this, they call it tax fund, the student ham of the, the Apostolic Church. They were holding the uh, Northern Region Conference because the Lauren happened to fall under the Northern Region. So they were doing it in Niger State, may not to be precise. So we traveled there. He was scheduled to minister the deliverance night. So we I mean, volunteered to follow him to minister together. I and some friends, we went there. Now, you see, when we got there, because of there was no paraphernalia, there was no paparazzi, there was no whatever around him and us, the organizers of the program did not take us very seriously or accorded us the respect. At least, said, this is part of the guest minister. At least, some measure of. They were just seeing us as boys. See, boys. But we, don't, we didn't allow that to affect us. We just continued with everything we were doing. First day, second day. Friday was the all night. I mean, it was, the deliver- it was an all night. So, we got there. He, they invited him to preach. We were there also about three or four of us. Uh, by the time he finished preaching and we started ministering and God's power came down, we're ministering to people throughout the night, early hours of the day. Do you know one thing we discovered? After that meeting, the way they started responding to us was different. They changed our rooms. Amen, somebody. Before they put us in, the, in everybody kind of room, that kind of thing. After what they changed our room, they changed the reception, they changed the way they were addressing us. They said, hey, how are you, sir? Hey, well, let's, sir. Hey, let's have you. They said, can I see you, sir? Can I see you this? Now, when we got to the room, we were laughing. At this one, we were laughing. I said, ah. I said, I said, so, oh, this is, you have not, oh, you, uh, you're not feeling, oh, let's, ah, let's not begin to give them. But of course, that did not really make anything to us. It didn't make any meaning to us. But it just showed how people place people at times. And that's why it's wrong. You can be wrong in the way you please people. You can be wrong. That's why the Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will what? Exalt you. Listen, the pathway to greatness is by serving. If I mention Mother Teresa right now. Listen, Mother Teresa is not a very tall person. Not too tall but <laughs> listen that name rings a bell today in the world why because she served the poorest of the poorest ministered hope and healing to them in a lifetime you see service is the pathway to greatness people talk about martin luther king jr today by the way he was a reverend minister a baptist minister who spoke you know, out uh, about racial abuse in, in America. Though he's dead, uh, but his work still lives on. Why? He served his generation. You see, that is the way God, uh, I mean, that's how you become great. There's a scripture, many of us know this scripture. I don't want to quote it. I want to show you something. Matthew 20. This is Jesus when he was speaking to his disciples. I want us to read it. Matthew 20 verse 26. But it shall not be so among you. Whosoever shall be great. Don't say great. Among you. Let him be what? Let him serve. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, that's looking like, uh-uh. how can the way to greatness be through service? That's the way. That's the way. Jesus as great as, great as he was. He stooped down. He washed the feet of all the disciples. That is what? It takes humility to do that. Listen, anybody who is not willing to serve is not ready to be great. So you need to understand that the way up is through what? Service. Say service. Look at verse 27. And whosoever will be chief. The word chief here means forced. Among you, let him be what? Your servant. You can see that the way God sees things is not the way man sees things. Hallelujah. You want to be great? Then be ready to serve. That's why you should take your service seriously. Look at this lady that died in Acts chapter 9. Tabitha or Docas. She died. And I was thinking... What will make Peter to come down? 
Listen, it has to be because of her work. She was ministering to widows. Acts chapter 9 verse 36 to 42. Do you know that because of her works, God brought her back to life? Listen, she's a great woman. How did she attain to greatness? By service. All this uh, wanting to be served, uh, wanting to be, you know, let me say it in Asia, we rank a day date. Amen, somebody? There's anything like that. Listen, that's not the way to greatness. The way to greatness is service. I don't know whether you remember this story. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 from verse 1 to 9. When Jesus was going to enter Jerusalem, he had to ride the donkey. I don't remember the story. He told the disciples where to find the donkey. They brought the donkey. They laid clothes on the donkey. And they put you know, leaves on the ground for the donkey. Now, let me ask you a question. Ordinarily speaking, on a good day, will anybody be applauding a donkey and putting their clothes on the ground? Come on, talk to me. You're not answering me. I say ordinarily, will you put your clothes on the ground and be clapping for a donkey? Question is this. Why were they clapping for the donkey? Because of the person that was riding the donkey. You see, that donkey was an ordinary donkey before then. The moment Jesus climbed it, it became an important donkey. You see, let me say it so you understand. There is no how you are serving God that God's greatness will not rub off on you. When leaves stay close to soap, leaves become what? Soap. God is greatness personified. So as you serve him, there is no how part of his greatness will rub off on you. It will. The Bible was talking about the greatness of God in Psalm 145 verse 3. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I mean, our God is a great God. And there's no how you walk with him. That part of his greatness will not rub off on you. At times I've been humbled. And like I said, it's humility for me. I'm humble because at times I, when I see some kind of honor, recognition, respect uh, that people give me. And I just wonder, I said, it, 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 listen, it's not because I'm intelligent or brilliant. Uh, it's just because of him. Amen? Amen. It is Christ, uh, the hope of glory that is making the difference. That's why I want to say this to you. Greatness, uh, greatness. Uh, the, the, the reason you should take uh, your service seriously, the reason you should not joke with your service is because greatness is what? Greatness is, I mean, service rather is the pathway to greatness. If you want to be great in life, you need to serve. Tap your number say, if you want to be great in life, you need to serve. That's the, that, see, that's the way to greatness. That's the pathway. And listen, if you serve with all your heart, God's greatness will rub off on you in the name of Jesus. Number two, why should I take my service seriously? Why should I not joke with my service? What's the significance of my service to God? Number two, because um, your service is also the basis of promotion. You know, <laughs> people want to be elevated. People want to be celebrated. People want to be honored. And I always say this to people. <laughs> the pathway to promotion and lifting is service. Listen, God will not promote a lazy person. <laughs> God will not elevate uh, someone who is doing nothing for him. Listen, people desire to be promoted. People desire to be lifted. But they don't know that service is the pathway. Say service is the pathway. Listen, if you are not ready to serve, you are not ready to be promoted. You know at times some people think that it's the enemy that is stopping their promotion. No, you are the one. Because you are not doing anything for God yet. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. So if you ever want to be lifted, if you ever want to be elevated, you need to serve. 
Those who will be lifted are those who are serving God. I'm going to give you an example in the Bible. Now, Elisha used to be one of the sons of the prophet. There's a school called the sons of the prophet that Elijah founded. People were training to be prophets. <laughs> now, Elisha belonged to the same group. But you know there was a day he moved from being just a, I mean, a son of the prophet to becoming the prophet himself. You know why that happened? It was because the Bible was describing how Elisha served Elijah. Second Kings 3 verse 11. The Bible says, here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. He was a faithful servant. Glory be to God. So, if you want God to elevate you, and let me even say this before I forget. Do you know that Elijah had a servant before Elijah? Who ran away. <laughs> when the going became tough, he ran away. <laughs> Glory be to God. He lost his place. He lost his position. May you never lose your place in Jesus' name. There are people who start well. They start well. They start well serving God endlessly. They serve God endlessly rather. But along the line, they lose their way. Listen, you will not lose your way. You will not lose your place. You will not lose your position. Listen, that's why Paul says uh, be steadfast. If there were not things that could move you from serving God, he would not say that. You know, as the world is dealing with the effect of the coronavirus, I was speaking to a beloved man of God. And one of the things he was saying, which I agreed with him, this pandemic, listen, as I think it's like a two-edged sword, it has helped some believers to grow and it has also made some believers to what? To go down spiritually. It just depends on how you respond to it. Listen to this. There is no contrary wind that comes your way. God wants you to use it to rise. That's why you are an eagle. Eagles rejoice when there is storms. Or when there are storms rather. You know why they rejoice? Because they use the storms to rise to the greatest height. That's why I feel like prophesying to somebody in the name that is above every other name. This pandemic will not sink you in the name of Jesus. I said this pandemic will not seize you in the name of Jesus. You know, at times people talk about how long they have been in the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a place for that. But listen, what determines promotion is not how long you have been in the Lord. It's your impact. It's your contribution. The question is this. Sir. What are you contributing? What are you bringing to the table? Whose life is getting better because of you? Hello? I said, hello, somebody. Look at how David rose. Look at his rising. A shepherd boy. Listen, a nobody. All of a sudden, he attained unto what? National limelight. A small boy. A teenager. <laughs> Glory be to God. He had been serving God. He had been serving God under Jesus' father. He had been a faithful shepherd taking care of the sheep of his father. While he was taking care of the sheep of his father, the lion came, went after him and killed him. The bear came, went up. You see, those were the little, little tests that God was using him to prepare him for the bigger tests. Are you in the house tonight? You know, I see some people. <laughs> they say, ah, I say, why you know something? I say, I'm waiting for my big break. Ah, you may wait a long time, boy. The Bible says, whatsoever your hands finds to do, do it what? Listen, you must start from somewhere. At times people, they are looking up. They are, listen, listen, nobody starts from the top. You must start from somewhere. Amen? amen. I said, amen. amen. If you want to rise, if you want to be elevated, the pathway to elevation is service. God says something to me this afternoon. He says, 
I'm trying to find it. Okay. It says, the way to rise, the way to rise in the kingdom is by service, not by lobbying or politics or politicking. Amen, somebody. Hello, somebody in the house. So, so, yeah, if I know that person. Some people play politics even in God's house. Ah, once I know the general overseer, amen, somebody. Once I know the AGO, amen, somebody. Uh, they will put my name there. Amen, somebody. And when I go and greet them, I go and greet the man of God with some bemo. Amen, somebody. You know what they call, you know what they call the bemo? Amen, somebody. I bring a prophet offering. Amen, somebody. Don't get me wrong. There's a proper way of bringing proper. But at times, some people are doing it because of what they, they want to get, so that they can influence the decision of the AGO. Amen, somebody. Look at your neighbor and tap your neighbor. And say, Are you here tonight? Listen to this. Honor all men. But listen to this. You need to understand that it's God that promotes. <laughs> if you are promoted by men, if your promotion is by any man, listen, it's, <laughs> you have to be scared. You, you must not sleep with your two eyes open. I mean closed. Because the same people can say, ah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're coming back. And, and, and that's the end. somebody. Because they say, ah, well, I fear you, amen, somebody. We'll put you there. But if God puts you there, nobody can bring you down. Hello? Are you here tonight? <laughs> I remember a very funny story. <laughs> While I was <laughs> in the service of uh, Rema in those days, uh, uh, when we were in one of the ministers, you know, was not behaving in a way that is expected of a minister. Amen, somebody. So I called him and I said, hey, what you are doing is wrong. Go. I said, minister, this is what you're supposed to do. And he took offense and got angry. Amen. So, but God, in fact, he got so angry that he started, you know, speaking to me like we are, you know. And I said, I said man of God. I said, no, 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 no. But you respect a lot. He got so serious. My secretary came and said, ah. He said, uh, <laughs> My secretary was so shocked. I said, ah, 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 what's happening? We were trying to calm it. I was shouting. And, ah, ah. So I, I felt that two of us cannot be sh shouting. Otherwise, we'll be, they will say both of us are mad. So I had to keep quiet. Amen, somebody. Let him have the free day. He spoke, spoke, and he stormed out of the office. He stormed. Went to his uh, office, packed his thing, and just disappeared. Ah. So try to reach him. Number was not. Ah, try to reach him. Ah. Second day, he didn't come to office. Third day, he didn't come. Ah, where is this man? Okay, so I just decided to sleep on the matter. I cast the body upon the Lord. You know what happened? After the third day came, where the office, my secretary said, ah, so, 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 he wants to say, I said, oh, let him come in. He came and he lied down flat. Ah, I am very sorry. I said, ah, ah, about what? Ah, he, he, he knows that he has said what he's not supposed to say and blah 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 and until I say I should get up I say please get up so that people don't enter I say why are you lying down on the floor like this so <laughs> he got up and <laughs> do you know what happened those three days within him he actually traveled out of town went to Lagos went to meet the powers that be he met somebody people were higher than high he Going to talk to them. Ah, I don't like the way Jeremy is doing me. Even somebody. Even somebody. <laughs> Some people are laughing. Ah, oh, what is it now? Blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay. So those people, in fact, those people without, without they not even hearing my part, they didn't call me. They just communicated straight to oversight. Ah, this boy is being maltreated though. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, when did he, ah. All these things, he was one telling me, somebody. I didn't know it. He was one informing me that when they took the case to the oversight and the oversight had it, the oversight said, there's no case there. So they were, you know, it's like they busted their bubbles. They were so shocked. Ah, no case. Said, no case. Forget about it. Go on, go and submit to your guy. So he was the one that was pouring all these things out because I didn't know anything. You see, that's what I said, you see. If you are serving God, God is the one that will fight your battles. Because the point was that he wanted to use politics or lobbying. Say lobbying. Listen, 
Except you got there by lobbying. That's why your heart will be shaking. Amen, somebody. Because if you become make someone more powerful, ah, I say, oh my God, amen, somebody. Because you know you didn't get there by right. Amen, somebody. But if you got there without lobbying, if I maybe as you will say this, the coming down to even pastor the church then was not something that I was, you know, wanted to do because I felt where I was then, God wouldn't be there. But in obedience to leadership, I came. It took a lot of, I mean, you know, trying to talk to me to come. Amen, somebody. So I, it was something I was eyeing. Some people were already eyeing the place, eyeing it. See, they were eyeing it in the name of Jesus. I, I claim that position. Amen, somebody. I've never prayed that kind of prayer. When it comes, eyeing what? Listen, your works will speak for you. The Bible said the gift of a man will make room for him. Let me encourage you tonight. If you want to be promoted and if you want your promotion to last, serve God genuinely and sincerely. Honor all men. Amen somebody. But look to God. Amen somebody. The same way God elevated David. The same way God elevated Elisha. It will elevate and promote you in the name of Jesus. And hear me. When I'm talking about promotion, I'm not just talking about spiritual promotion. No. I'm talking about promotion every respect. In your job, in your business, you'll be ahead of your peers. People wonder, ah, what's your secret now? I know somebody who told me, he said, he said, I don't joke with my commitment to God because I know that's the source of my rising. And that's true. Amen, somebody. Look at Daniel. We are wondering why was he rising and rising and rising in Babylon. He served God. Listen, the God that can shut the lion's mouth because of someone that was serving him. There's nothing he cannot do for you. <laughs> you see, we are the ones that need to take our service seriously. I've ever heard about the lion's mouth being shut. Closely, they're on strike. Eh? Lions on strike. Potentially, amen, somebody. Because you know the other time somebody wanted to try it. Amen, somebody. Down the road there, amen, you are. He didn't live to, to tell the story. Because lions don't go on strike all the time. Amen, somebody. The only way they go on strike is that God shut their mouth. Because when the king came and was lamenting, hey, hey, Daniel, servant of the living God, your God that you serve continually. Look at that word. Your God that you serve what? Continually. Is he able to deliver you? Daniel 6 verse 21. Daniel now said, Daniel 6 22, he said, my Lord has sent his angel and has shot the lion's mouth. God will silence every contrary tongue. Listen to this. If God be for you, who can be against you? You will rise. You will win. You will prevail in the name of Jesus. Let me give you one more before we close. Why should you take your service to God seriously? Number three. Because service, your service is the basis for growth and development. Your service is the basis for your growth. And development. That's why you should take your service very seriously. I have seen this over, over time. Played out in my life. And the life of other people that I saw in scriptures. Uh, that if you will serve God. And take your service to God seriously. You will grow. And when I'm talking about growth. I'm not just talking about spiritual growth. I'm talking about growth in every personal development also. I was somewhere some time ago to speak. And somebody came to meet me. He said, ah. he said, did you study psychology? I said, no. He said, what did you study? I said, engineering. Ah. He said, engineering. I said, how come? How come you are talking about things that has no correlation to engineering? I said, it is as a result of growth. You see, when you are serving God, you will be presented with challenges. Those challenges are opportunities to grow. When I had the opportunity of pastoring a church, a church that was in crisis. That's my first pastoring experience. A church that is in crisis. Different factions. What a way to start pastoring. Amen. I did a lot of visitations. 
Ah, I'm the new pastor. Say, ah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, boy, yeah, you know, <laughs> I had all kinds of stories. I, you know, the reason I was visiting because that's the principle of pastor. You go and visit everybody. You go and tell everybody. Oh, you, I, mean, <laughs> I thought some people would come. They didn't come again. He said, I ah, will come. I didn't see them. Amen. Somebody. And I felt this. I said, they want one like one ball. They change their mind again. One, one, one. Amen. Somebody. So I have to be learning so many hard lessons. Amen. Somebody. <laughs> That the fact that they said they were coming to something is going to come. So imagine, I mean, Lord, I had to start crying to God. God help me. Oh. Ah, I didn't know this is pastor is. So. I had to seek for counsel. I started reading. Amen. That's how I developed my capacity to read. Started reading books. How do you deal with the church that's in crisis? How do you undo people? I mean, these things made somebody to grow. Amen. Somebody. That's how I got to know about John Maxwell. His first book I read, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Hell, I read that book only God knows how many times. Probably more than 20 times then. I've read it a couple of times after. Listen, listen, listen. When you serve God, it will give you a platform to grow. You will grow your wings. You will stretch your capacity. You know, people wonder, ah, why am I in this thing? Why am I in this ministry? Ah, challenges for... Ah. It's because of where God is taking you to. Amen. Somebody. God is using those things to prune you. God is using those things to, I mean, to, to shape in you. God is using those things to form you. Because of where he's taking you to. He's taking you to a great place, but he has to prepare you. Look at Samuel. I mean, listen, look at how God, listen, it was while he was serving under Eli. Those were the opportunities that God was using to groom him. For leadership. That was the prophet in training. He saw the ways the sons of Eli were misbehaving. God was using that to teach him a lesson. So that he would know how to act or behave or conduct himself. Ladies and gentlemen, service is the basis for growth. At times, uh, you are working against your growth when you don't serve. You have not tested anything. You have not proven anything. You know, the reason David declined what Saul gave him, he says, sir, I'm sorry. I cannot go with this. I have not proven it. I have not proven this instrument, equipment you are giving me. So what have you proven? I have proven this by hands. With these hands, I kill the lion. With these hands, I kill the bear. With these same hands, I will kill this Goliath. Listen, it's only what you have tested and proven that will deliver you in the day of trouble. That's the thing that will work. Things that you have not tested, you have not proven, will just be theory. And that's why I'm saying that it's important you take your walk. Maybe I will show you next time when we, when we continue on this series. When you look at, or let me even say before I close, when you look at the narrative, in the Acts of the Apostles about Paul with Barnabas, you, you first see things like Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas and Paul. That's what you'll be seeing. After a while, you start seeing Paul and Barnabas. Paul, in fact, after a while, it became perpetually Paul and Barnabas. What's that? What is trying to tell you that in the beginning, you know, it was Barnabas that actually went to look for him and brought him and introduced him. Ah, oh, born again. Kobal again, Kobal again, you know. You say there's born again, there's born bo again. Say, oh, born again, dada. He may say, oh, sure. Yeah, I'm oh, sure, oh, born again. Say, what do you say? Yeah, born again. You can't learn it. He may say, oh, born again. He may say, oh, see, we have heard about this man. He's a very terrible man. Say, ah, that was in the past. He stood for him. That's how he had access to the apostles. He started his growth process. He was following the example of Barnabas. But after a time, because he was growing, the narrative changed. He became Paul and Barnabas. Until he became Paul alone. Listen. God is going to give you and I ample opportunities to grow. And to develop. It comes by service. So, if you are ignoring the opportunity to serve, you are actually delaying your growth and development. I'm going to close with this story. There was a young lady while I was still serving. Then remember, we were trying to choose leadership. And 
we put her as one of the leaders to be in the music team. And she came to meet me. She said, please, please. She said, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want to. Ah, I said, what? She said, no, 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 no. I just want to be a member. Okay. Because we don't, I, I don't force people to stop. Left her as a member. Down the road, one or two years, she had to go to another side of town because of where she was. So she started going to the church in Akobo then. Then, they were choosing leadership. They were looking for somebody to take care of a particular <laughs> ministry. And the pastor called and said, ah, this person, I, I want to know how this person, uh, in fact, it was actually put together I and mean, put out like an advert for that position because it was needed. Now, what came to my mind, you know, if I wanted to act in the natural, I said, ah, she turned down the opportunity of having that. No, no, no. Don't, don't, eh? don't consider. But because I understand that leadership is an opportunity to grow. I said, oh, she, she can do it. She has the capacity. So they appointed her. Amen. What I'm trying to say was that what she was running away from, Amen. Somebody, she had to come and visit later on. Amen. Somebody, God gave her a second chance, and that helped to shape or shaping rather and mold her development in every respect. So we need to know that we stand to benefit, you stand to gain as a result of your service. I pray for you tonight. That with a renewed vigor, you begin to take your service, your commitment to God, uh, seriously more than ever before in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. Let's lift up our hands to heaven and begin to worship him tonight. Father, we give you the glory tonight. We give you the praise tonight. We thank you, Father. Father, we renew our commitment. Service to God. Your service to God ought to be taken seriously, not with levity. Service is the pathway to greatness. Service is the pathway to promotion. Service is the pathway to growth and development. If you really want to grow and develop, you must take your service seriously. If you want to be promoted in life, service is the gateway. Father, with a renewed vigor, new understanding tonight, we approach our service. We approach serving you. Lord, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, every excuses, every burden that is on the way, we take it out of the equation tonight. We receive the power to serve you in a renewed vigor. We receive power to serve you with a better understanding. I declare tonight that burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed, our eyes of understanding are enlightened. We rise by your spirit. Lift up your hands and bless him tonight. Lift up your hands and bless him tonight. Blessed be your name again and again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we have our seats? Let's bring out our tithes and offerings tonight.